Chris and Dan show. What is going on? You, this is regular, regular this guy. guest, <laughs> Joey Finro. He came to visit me. I'm stranded, just dog sitting today. So I came to rescue. Joey came to the rescue. <laughs> Chris Sauber, who you, this is his channel primarily, right? He's not here because he's not a morning person. Yeah, and it's We're eleven still trying to wake him up. It's eleven thirty. He's not gonna be here till like one, one thirty. So maybe, yeah, yeah maybe. <laughs> so yeah, look, Joey's got to go. I have to get Joey on the show to do this. Absolutely. So Joey's a realtor. For those that don't know, and you've been on the show a bunch of times. You have yeah. a bunch of Nightwish fans now. Yeah, hell they yeah, love yeah. you. They <laughs> love your take on Nightwish. <laughs> and man, a lot of fans. Yeah. Maybe we'll react to a song if we have a chat. I don't know, but I wanted to talk to you about. Realtor, being a realtor. Sure. Because that's probably <laughs> – I was going to associate it with like – you know how they say in cancer, like you know – you probably know someone with cancer or you no. know somebody who knows oh, somebody. for sure. I think realtor is similar, not to equate it to cancer. That's, <laughs> why, I didn't wanna, that's yeah. why I didn't want to use it, but I'm just going to roll Being a realtor is like having cancer. <laughs> well, in 2022, it might be. Right, true. Right? So – Point is, everybody knows yeah. somebody who's a realtor. For sure. Right? Like, Absolutely. everybody knows somebody who's a realtor. Yeah. So, how do you stand out as a realtor? First of all, why do you become a realtor when it's so competitive? Yeah. And number two, like, well, let's just start with that. Like, yeah. Yeah. How great. do you feel being a realtor that actually is good? Mm. And I know Joey for what almost ten years now. Yeah, yeah. He's good. Like I met him in the office when I was a realtor too. Five star, <laughs> five, a five star. Like, dude, the guy went from like just dedicating. I never dedicated fully to real estate, right? So I'll never know. Because like, you had too many. Th- yeah, it's, you still do have so many things going on. Too much, yeah. man. I'll never know how like I would have done. Mm. But you did like what I would strive for if i were doing real real estate yeah not only do you dabble in it like personally is you you're like you've become an investor now too absolutely but like what made you want to become a realtor in the first place knowing it's so competitive like you're a guy with a college degree yeah why would you do that yeah like it's not like people (laughs) why would you make that decision (laughs) people (laughs) realtor is such a like it's like the it, it's a tale of two cities with a realtor. You have on the one hand like the cream of the crop, which you're probably in there now, where people have like high respect for you. All like, oh no, this guy knows his shit. He's not like the other realtors, right? And then you have the majority, ninety five percent of the other ones. They're they don't have like good people don't treat them with respect, right? Like they treat them like used car salesmen for the most part, for sure, right? Why did you want to get into that? You're a psycho. (laughs) I am. I have been told that. Uh, Well, you know, when I got into real estate, actually, I never thought I was going to be a real estate agent. I like. I had actually a couple of family members that had said, "Oh, you should be a realtor," and and I'm. Oh, realtors are like used car salesmen. That that was my thought in growing up, and that was your thought too. Yeah, when I was like 22, I was like, "Dude, realtors are like you. I don't. Why would I want to be that? They're schmuck." (laughs) Um, And then, but it had to do with you know, I wanted to invest into real estate. And and so I knew I was going to be in real estate, but on the investing side, as like something I do on the on the on, yeah, just in uh, as a side hustle, if you were, if you will. Um, I thought I was going to own my own business, doing something else, be an entrepreneur, and mm-hmm. then with the proceeds, go buy rental properties. Mm-hmm. Um, that was my that was my plan. I, nothing had to do with being a real estate agent. And it wasn't until I bought my first property at 23, uh, just I think I just turned 23, and then we closed just a couple months later. Um, I watched my realtor, and I'm and I'm like, first of all, that that's easy. <laughs> that's what I was like, dude. He you know he basically talks to people and negotiates. Mm. Well. I love that. That's like a dream for me. Um, talking yeah, you're very to people, much like a social butterfly. Yeah, yeah. Talking to people and then negotiating and helping people get a good deal. Uh, that all sounds sounds like fun. So that's what I saw on the outside. And then my realtor kind of shared with me that, oh, well, I'm not just a you know used car salesman, if you will. Like I actually made this a business selling real estate. I never knew that that was a. 
something. I never, and, and you know, his plan at the time was to get out of selling real estate one day, but have his team be selling real estate. So I was like, oh, that's cool. So I could like build something, walk away. And, um, and so the reason why I did it is because I knew I was going to do something with real estate and the startup costs were super low. I mean, insanely low. Um, and that's one of the reasons like why the entry, right? Is like barriers entry nothing. is almost nothing. You don't, you don't have to have a degree or anything like that. Um, so I, I knew that the costs were low and the upside was huge. Do you think that should be huge. regulated? Do you think that, um, do you think like the realtor board should say, Hey, you know what? We need like minimum requirements. It shouldn't be this easy for, or has that been a problem? In so the industry? I think slowly they're at, they're making the, the test harder and then like the continuing education harder. Oh, they are. Um, yeah. Oh. They're slowly kind of like, uh, uh, but, but not much. Like mm -hmm. it's not, it, it's not as, as much as you would expect. But I mean, I, I actually didn't know. I knew that there was a lot of realtors. I actually didn't know that there were as many as they are. And it could just be, because I'm in Orange County, California. I, I grew up in Washington, so I might not have had too much understanding there. But uh, I, when I quickly learned uh, when I when I uh, when I got into real estate full time is that man, there is a lot of competition. I mean, a lot. You know, everybody knows three, four, five realtors here. I mean, everybody does. And I know that this is in, in a multiple markets now, especially as as the real estate market. Go, it goes crazy as it did in 21 and beginning of 2022. Um, more people get in the business because, oh, it's so easy to make money. That That's kind of what the, the thought process is there. But what I learned, and I can finish on this question with this, is that we've heard the 80-20 um, the principle. Um, it's really like 90-10 in real estate. 10% uh, uh, of the agents, we do 90% of the sales. Yeah. So the large, large majority of agents don't don't do anything. You know, they barely do one or two deals a year. Mm -hmm. And after you like pay your expenses, pay the office, your uh, the, the brokerage. Like, I mean, you know, there there there's it's not really worth it if you do a couple of deals. You know, so, so turnover is huge. The turnover is huge. So most people get in, they'll do it for six months or a year, figure out that, whoa, this is not for me. It's way more harder than, than I thought. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so then they go and get a job. But it is like a tale of two cities where you have that 10% and especially like the top 10% of that 10%. I mean, they're basically millionaires and yes. above at yes. that point. So what like what separates those guys now that you've been in this space like long and what a decade? Yeah, I have. <laughs> yeah, and it w really wasn't until the like you know last five years is when I started like turning stuff around, and and then now the last did you started noticing like you're getting more respect from others, or are you still treated with the same kind of respect like when you started from like consumers? Yeah. Um, I, I think it's just more, if you, when you have more success, yes, consumers, I think view you with more respect and have more, you know, they kind of like listen to you and, or at least hear, hear what you have to offer. Mm -hmm. Um, when you have success and have a lot of sales and, and, um, and experience under your belt. But I think for me, what helped, well, like kind of turn things around to where I, you know, in the top five in my office and, um, uh, for, for the last several years and continue and I will continue to be that is, um, is I just started having more like, uh, systems and like more like, um, structures uh, is what I'm trying to say structure with my business on how many people I talk to a day, you know, how many showings I go on, how many appointments I'm setting. Um, when I added structure and doing the activities like every single day, that's when over time I saw results. Mm -hmm. And when you do that over time, like are you in, a big script guy? Not necessarily. No, Never I mean, been. I, I do, I know the scripts. I kind of like, you know, w w when I talk with sellers or buyers and, you know, stuff like that, like even debating on is, is it a good time to buy? Mm -hmm. Um, you could say that that's a script, but I, 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 it's more of a conversational piece now. So like w when you're new, I think you should like read scripts and like understand like how do people like talk about it? Not wow. that you're a robot or trying to tell people what to say or think, but, um, it's like practice. Like, you know, like Tom Brady, when he goes, like he practices, you know, the script, right? The playbook. And then he goes out on the game. He doesn't have the script and playbook in front of him. He just, he's done it so many times. He's kind of like internalized it, you mm -hmm. know? 
Um, and he might look, you know, review it real quick before, you know, before the game and stuff. But, um, but he spent so many times practicing it, it that it, it's more internalized. It's just like a framework. Yeah. So he, it allows him to react quicker too, because you got it. And it's more conversational. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Versus and Tom Brady doesn't have to think, Oh, when the ball hikes, Tom Brady's not thinking, how does this play go? He already knows what's yeah, he already going knows. on. And then yeah. he, you know, he goes. So. He said he knows based on like some defensive lineman's foot angle. Like, <laughs> knows, I mean, he's ridiculous. Yeah, he's man. ridiculous. But, you know, yeah. for realtors, it's kind of the same thing. So, yeah, you know, advice to new realtors, because the first, sure. first thing, any, especially like the younger ones, but any age, really, they're like, okay, I'm going to be a realtor. So the right. first thing they do, get glammed up, take right. a photo shoot. Lease a new car. Right Lease a new car. That's I have seen that man. so many times. Like they're about to get their license, so people go lease a Mercedes or why? Oh, man. Why and is then, there a need for that? Like, yeah. Well, I think you know it could also. It's a couple things. It's location. You know, I think Orange County. You know, I think here, at least from where I grew up, way you know, like the average person drives way nicer cars than, than oh, yeah. where I grew up. Yeah. And then I think you know people believe. I think it's a lie that. Oh, if I have the nice car, it kind of means that I'm successful. And you might have a small portion of people that believe that, but oh man, that uh, I, I'm not willing to take that risk and, and to go do that just for you know hoping to get clients. But, um, but my, my advice, waste their time on like stupid shit, right? Rather than like, yeah, what would be your advice? Like, what should they actually do instead of all that nonsense? Well, I think why people do that is because they don't want to do um, the boring stuff <laughs> that works. Yeah. Um, and so it's like, hey, if I could just lease a car and clients come to me, that's I funny. think they think that's more fun <laughs> and it's easier. Well, it is more fun. But it is more fun. So you but it's, pay for it. Exactly. But you got, you're on that lease for three years, you know, that uh, or more. Um, but uh, it, it's it's talking to more people, you know, and it's finding people that are considering selling or considering investing and mm -hmm. considering purchasing. Um, you know, it's uh, it's staying in contact with people that you know. And I that's one thing that I feel like I do a good job with is I stay in contact with people and naturally yeah, real estate do. comes up you naturally do. real estate comes how up. how do you stay in co oh, this was actually thank you for bringing this up because this is my next question a lot of the realtors i know you're not one of them actually but the ones that i know like from family or like distant family especially when they're new like they don't know how to balance being a normal human being with right. like being like some of these people, as soon as they get their license, their relationship with me completely changed. I know. Hey Dan, you know, I'm having a party. Like it's about real estate, but you never talked to me about these kind of things before, like party right. ever. Like, so how do you not be annoying, but also work on your sphere because that's all you have at the beginning right. your sphere of influence. Right. I think it's a um, I think it's it's definitely like an an art uh, but also it's like it's hard to get it right for each person. Um, cuz I think each person likes to like be their level of annoyance might change a little bit. But um, for for people that I know, like right when I got into real estate, and you might remember this uh, that training exercise, like I actually did call and and I and, and like e even my close buddies, it might be kind of awkward or whatever. But I was like, "Hey, man, I just got into real estate. Um, I'm learning a lot. Um, you know, if, if you have any, you know, if you need any help with real estate, let me know. I'll I'll, I'll hook you up, or I'll you know I'll take care of you. Mm -hmm. um, and um, or if you know of anybody looking to buy or sell, I'd absolutely love the opportunity to earn their business. And then I kind of like people that I know that I'm friends with. I stop it there. Like I don't like some people might call once a month and say, "Hey." Uh, this is a business call. Like, mm -hmm, I, mm -hmm. this is a, and we're like buddies. Mm -hmm. You don't need to tell me this. <laughs> like, it's a business call. Do you know anybody that's looking to buy or sell or invest in real estate right now that you can refer to me? <laughs> you know, so it's like, and some people do that, but, but some I'm, people don't have I'm, that off switch to not. Right. I'm more so just want, I want my people that I'm friends with to be comfortable that Joey's not always going to ask for a referral every time he's with me. You know, even my past clients, like I have a lot of past clients now and most of the time, like you, even through 2020, like I, I called almost all of my past clients like, Hey, are, are you okay? Like we, we didn't talk about anything with real estate. And actually my, a lot of my calling 
in 2020 just to check on people to see if they're okay. Like, how are your family doing with COVID? Doing How's your COVID? work doing? Yeah. It led to so much business in 2021. Dude, one of the things. So much. Did. And just because I was top of mind. That's just, that you know, that's kind of, that's what's worked well with me. Stayed in touch with people. And I lightly talked about real estate, especially the people that lightly, I know. Yeah. Lightly. And then over time, what I've realized is, especially in my market, people are effing busy. It's not their job to remember Joey. It's my job to be conveniently available mm -hmm. so that if and when real estate comes up, oh, Joey just called me a month ago to ask, to tell me that interest rates are seven and a half percent today. Oh, yeah. uh, now, you know, my mom just did it. And or like, Joey that just happens posted so on much. his story something because they're all connected to exactly. your socials. Right? Yeah. So I just try, I, I work to stay in touch, make sure people are taken care of. Do you need anything from me? Um, I, I, I come from contribution versus what can you refer me yeah. uh that to me i i won't do I, I personally don't like it when you know they, they're only call me like a, if a financial planner or a tax guy yeah. or an attorney they only call me to like hey do you need an attorney help right now or can you refer someone i just i don't like that you know yeah it That's makes just you feel me, like though. a transaction no exactly. you're absolutely right because i know from like people that i know closely you know they're Sure. They're like, hey, um, you know, they they just change and like everything becomes like a transaction. It's almost yeah. like I hate that they're a realtor now. Right. <laughs> because we don't have a relationship. Right, right. Anymore. Exactly. You're only calling me for a sale. Like, yeah, like I, I just, I do it. not I like it. that. Matter of fact, yeah. it works like it's counterproductive to whatever they're trying to achieve. For it sure. would have been much better to just like continue to be my yeah. friend. Oh, I know you're a realtor. I see all your shit right. posting. The One of the best things you ever did, I don't know if I ever told you this you should have told me you were sooner <laughs> that pizza thing you did oh hell yeah man <laughs> you know i've seen all the shit from these people like all kinds of gimmicks but that pizza thing where it was like i don't want anything you know i'm just here's a free pizza like you just let us know what you want yeah dude I didn't do it because I was like, I know what sure. Joey's doing. Yeah, I don't yes. want to like sure. do that. I I, you should have though. You I could get my own pizza. Yeah, yeah I should have. Um, but I told Dora, I told my wife, and she was like, that's amazing. I don't know why more realtors don't do that. Yeah. So like stuff like that. Trying to be work. creative. But yeah. how'd you come up with that? Like well, isn't actually, that counterintuitive? You know what I'm going to spend money. I'll give it to my wife. It was my wife that gave oh. me the idea. And so the idea was because it was tw – um, I used to do a good amount of like in-person like client events like bowling or mm -hmm. pictures with Santa or – well, I used to do in-person. Then when 2020 happened with COVID, um, you know, everything was shut down. People were – you know, um, I, I wanted to try to still feel like I'm doing something special for the people that I care about and I've done business with and friends and da, da, da. Um, and so we did like a pizza night to where – um, it was a, a lot, I think it was over a hundred like households and we like, Hey, if you uh, send us what your pizza order, we're delivering pizza on this night, uh, give us your order and we'll make sure pizza gets sent to your house. Uh, I think it was on Thursday at six o'clock. It was whatever. like Uber Eats or something. Uh, no, no, we worked, I think it was either Domino's or, or, um, or, uh, what's it called? Uh, pizza Papa John's. Oh, Papa yeah, John's. it was the, those two. Um, and, and so we, we, we yeah, it was brilliant because yeah. I've seen because it's still a touch for me and I'm it doing something for me, special like for them. Totally, like, yeah. totally convenient because it's not right. like, oh, if you want free pizza, come to my event, right? Where you're gonna meet a bunch of strangers you don't want to talk to, right. And just to get right. pizza, because that's you wouldn't have got a, like a great turnout for no, that. No, you're right. Hey, yeah, no, you order. It's gonna come to your house. And we'll pay for it. Right, dude. That was yeah. really thank man. you. Yeah. Do you think you would do that again in like a down market, like a recession? Yeah, and I've actually pretty soon I want to do that again. I've done it twice now. How much both. did it cost you on average? Um, it cost it it, it it cost between five to seven hundred dollars. So it actually so a was lot of people. Yeah. So no, it was it was a little more expensive than I thought. <laughs> but I was like, well, you know what? I'm reaching more people than if I did an in person event. And actually, the in person events yeah. they're not cheap either. They're not cheap either. Yeah, right? I'm spending around the same money for that. And you get better ROI on this. Yeah, I do. It's, and I, think it's I don't have to people don't want to show up. It's, no, I didn't realize like and that's why I stopped doing events because um and it makes sense. I was like, well, if my like financial but I don't know, now I have a kid, yeah. you know, and yeah. so like it's yeah. harder to just like pick up and go. So if I did something that 
Thursday at six o'clock. I don't know if I like, especially yeah. if you're shy. Like, why would I go? Right. I know a bunch of people. It's are random be there. people. Yeah, Joey's I get to see outgoing, Joey. Yeah, but then all his right. friends are there. Right. And I don't want to deal with all yeah. that. Yeah, so mm-hmm. I I still might do like a once a year in person event, but I do I do like the uh, the pizza thing or even like a dessert. I I want to yeah. play play off those two. Um, but like, did you get ROI like from? Oh that yeah. First Oh yeah! Got every time, even oh yeah, every every time I do something like that, even really? in person, I get really? something. Yeah, yeah, dude. And you think of it, cost five six hundred, but like you know, let's say average commissions, you know, between fifteen to twenty thousand. You know, so it's like obviously that ROI. I'll so you take got every list day. things from the pizza thing. Yeah, I think I, uh, most. Every event, whether it be pizza or an in-person, I get something from, whether it's a seller or buyer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and really, it's not because I'm – I'm not necessarily just doing this for – like I do like – like no, uh, uh, like uh, staying in contact with people, you know. I do like I, I like that. Like, like I don't like nice just selling you a people. house and then like never talk to you again. That that's just not me. I yeah. just wasn't I just wasn't raised that way. So it's like I think it also works because it comes across genuine. Like yeah. Joey's just not you know he's you know obviously I am a business owner, so I am trying to stay in business. So mm-hmm. I, I'm trying to do two things at once: stay in a relation with people that I like, and then also stay top of mind. You know, I even um, think and that's I think that's a win win. Like- we can do in our in, in research yeah. like me and Chris can he's coming later this is his show by yeah. the way but in a couple uh, hours <laughs> yeah in a couple hours he's still sleeping but we'll, we might do this for like our students from oh, all of our courses oh, like yeah. hey you guys get a pizza on us yeah. or whatever like, yeah or even something. it might trigger more referrals for sure man or even like half off of this event or not event but this class or so maybe there's a, like another class that they could take no, like but like there's something about food man true no that is true yeah and it's cheaper you know, true. Right, because instead of food is like emotional. half off of three grand. Half off yeah. is like positioning, like oh, I'm still just a transaction of this. True. Food. No, you're you right. Know? But food, you're food breaking is bread, like, right? dude. I'm putting nutrients in your body. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Wow. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's but it, big time. It, yeah. Isn't that funny? Like, but it, why it, don't like you're the only real tribe ever interacted yeah. with that does this? Because yeah. usually it's like, oh, come to us. Right. Right. We'll have cake right or we'll have like santa and you've done that too I that's have. actually good a strategy too but like yeah we do like santa stuff like that where it's like okay but i still gotta go there yeah. but and this dude, is Santa's like ex- the massive. christmas thing that i've done it's so much more expensive and it's so much more planning and time and but people resources like it, they do but i almost feel like i get the same stuff Shit. out of the pizza or like another one I want to do, do like, like turkeys a, for Thanksgiving. Like right. just send people a 15 pound voucher yeah, that's not a bad idea. for a turkey. Yeah. And then for Christmas, I don't know, something. Dude, that's a great idea about Thanksgiving. Yeah. Hmm. Or like a, I could send you a, a, a pie you know, or something like yeah. that. Or like Halloween, send a bag of candies. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's because again, it's something. This so, year, you don't have small. to worry about trick or treat shopping. We got you. Yeah, we got you. From Finra. Dude, well, that's going to be like $7. Dude, for a bag that's a great idea. <laughs> Shoot, you, bro. That's a good idea. Right? That's a great idea. Yeah, the candy thing. Don't worry about it. We got you. Here you go. We got it because I hate, like, even me, like, oh, don't man. Don't you hate it when you get to Halloween Halloween's and you don't have any candy? Up. We don't have candy. What are we going to give We've solved dollars? that problem. Yeah. We've solved your problem for you. Here's candy. If you're wondering why you, you can't find any candy at the store, it's because I bought them all. Yeah. <laughs> I think that would work, too. Yeah. But, like, Dude, that's good. basically yeah. giving, you know what yeah. work, why? It's because regardless of industry, yeah. reciprocity for sure dude. so like when yeah. someone feels like they got something from you yeah with not anything in nothing, return right yeah they're exactly. like dude i owe this guy for sure even dude. if they read a couple of books on that feel it it's yeah. subconscious they like, feel no, I owe yeah this no it, it it's so true but again people i strongly believe this people can't sniff out if you're only doing it for money yeah yeah. And then not then you'll be out of money and out of referrals. Mm-hmm. If you come mm-hmm. across like a freaking used car salesman, say yeah, anything no. that that like I but if you come hey, it's you guys enjoy you know, it's on me, you know, if they can feel like you're actually like meaning to like come from contribution and help, um it um uh, that's when it's freaking magical. Dude, yeah. That, yeah. It's like stuff like this. So I guess that's enough advice for these realtors. Okay. Um, and we didn't even get into investing, but you've right. been on other videos where we've talked about that. And that's the next video. Yeah. The next one, when Chris gets here, yeah. uh, 
But anything else, Joey? Where can they find you, man? No, like- no, yeah, all, all is good. Yeah, um, I'm on um, Instagram at Joey Finro. We'll have um, a link underneath. For yeah, me. so you can. Yeah, Instagram is probably the best way to find me. And you also like music for the music fans. I do there. like music. Nightwish. Are you oh, listening? Oh, love it. Uh, yeah, loving Nightwish. Every morning and night. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Joe. I appreciate it. Thank you. You guys have a good day. Take care, guys. Bye bye. Bye, Chris.